It's a genuine pleasure and an honor to have Professor Terry Jordan Bitchkoff talk to us today. Terry's a special person, a special scholar, very special colleague and friend. He is a true son of Texas, uh, raised in Dallas, did his undergraduate work at Southern Methodist University, did his master's degree here in this department before going on to the University of Wisconsin, where he took his PhD in 1965. And even though he was in Wisconsin, he still did research on a te Texas topic, German settlement. After graduation, Terry taught for a few years at Arizona State University, and then returned home to Texas and taught at what is now the University of North Texas, but for years it was North Texas State University. But he joined the faculty here, the Department of Geography at the University of Texas 20 years ago. He holds the Walter Prescott Webb Chair in History and Ideas. And the true spirit of Walter Prescott Webb, who was a historian, but one with a very strong geographical focus, Terry's a cultural historical geographer and one with many ideas. I can't tell you how many times during the course of the past 20 years in various conversations with Terry about various geographers or about various aspects of geography. I would hear Terry make a comment like, well, he doesn't do my kind of geography. Or, well, that's not my kind of geography. As we discussed in this course so far this semester, there are many geographies. And there are many geographers doing different types of geography. Well, today, Terry is going to tell us about his kind of geography. The title of his presentation is My Kind of Geography, <laughs> Cultural Geography and Postmodernism. That's not true. That's not in the title. That's the title you gave me. Jordan. Actually, I, I chose the title of my um, little essay in order to facilitate a double purpose. My kind of geography allows me both to address some general thoughts and concerns and opinions that I have about our discipline at large taking stock at what is by any criteria a point near the end of my career. The same title also upon, allows me to elaborate upon my own particular and unique way of doing geography, my kind in the narrower sense. Now I'm a bit befuddled by old age and I'm not going to try to keep those two purposes segregated within the essay, but instead let you try to figure them out yourself. Geotheism, my religion. The very first thing I want you to know about uh, my kind of geography, broadly or narrowly presented, is that it functions as my religion. Now you think a lot of the time in this paper I'm going to be kidding, but most of the time I'm not. I am a geotheist. No other religion I have ever heard of interests me in the slightest. Planet Earth is the only heaven in the universe. Gaia is the one and only goddess of geotheism. No gods at all exist. And Gaia herself may not even be real. Geotheism is either monotheistic or non-theistic. I will never know. I'm probably the world's only geotheist. 
at least the way I define in my kind of geo religion. <clears throat> For me, geotheism satisfies all the spiritual and aesthetic and emotional and mystical and intellectual needs that I expect from a religion. And that's true even if Gaia doesn't exist. She has never once, by the way, spoken to me. And I have never asked her any questions. If Gaia does not exist, she certainly uh, does not, if she does exist, she certainly doesn't seem to have things on planet Earth quite as fully under control as Jane Lovelock and some others imagine. No matter. Clay-footed divinities remain the best kind. Moreover, Gaia leaves you pretty much alone. And that is a prime virtue for any deity. She does not engage in all that finger-pointing anger that I find so annoying in male shepherd gods in flowing robes or rule-making gods who send bureaucrats and merchants to be their messengers, scribes. Now it is true that she did repeatedly say, but without much commotion, my way or extinction. But hey, she was probably telling the truth. She didn't say that to me. But. Best of all, Gaia lacks that nasty compulsion to carve instructions on stone tablets and get angry right away when you ignore them. She may well be illiterate. In fact, she does not even care what happens to us. And I like that. Quit smiling. I mean this. I have been allowed to study geography for nearly 60 years, since 1945, to be precise. And to teach it, beginning as a laboratory instructor in climatology, for almost 45. That has been my enormous, boundless privilege. Far more than any human being deserves. An afterlife or some, on some silly, fluffy cloud or chasing nubile women around a paradisical garden, that's not for me. Geotheism remains entirely rooted in the real world. At least my kind does. Join my religion if you want to. But I'm perfectly happy alone, and I do not seek converts. Other than my dearly beloved Bella, evil communists long ago made it difficult for her to do so. But deep down, I think she has a lot to do with my geotheism. Hold on. Besides, I, we, want to run this church. And you might have a fear. Martin Luther got this whole drift of things going a long time ago. He's one of my heroes. Geotheism does permit Sunday heroes, sundry heroes, but no saints. When I was only seven, you must now allow me an autobiographical indulgence. Without it, nothing else, I have to say, will make any sense. I do not exaggerate much at all when I say my initial geotheistic stirrings came at the age of only seven. Not that I was some sort of prodigy or wunderkind, far from it. I was in most respects just a pretty ordinary kid playing cowboys and Indians and kill German soldiers and touch football with the other children living along Milton Avenue in Dallas or more accurately University Park, Texas. About that same time I learned some rudiments of fist fighting but I'm going to leave those out here. 